You're listening to GI Insights on ReachMD. And this episode is an educational grant provided by Fresenius Cabby. Here's your host, Dr. Charles Turk. This is GI Insights on ReachMD, and I'm Dr. Charles Turk. Joining me to share strategies for incorporating mixed lipid emulsions into clinical practice is Dr. Phil Ayers. Dr. Ayers is a clinical associate professor with the School of Pharmacy at the University of Mississippi and the Chief of Clinical Pharmacy Services in the Department of Pharmacy at Baptist Medical Center in Jackson. Dr. Ayers, welcome to the program. Thank you, Dr. Turk. It's great to be with you today. Well, to start us off, would you tell us how lipid emulsions in parenteral nutrition have evolved over the years? including any factors that influenced those changes. Yes, I'd be glad to. So I've been doing nutrition support for 30 years, so I've seen some significant changes, especially recently in the lipid emulsion arena. But we think back and we first really started using lipid emulsions in the mid-70s, in the U.S. at least. We primarily used them initially to prevent essential fatty acid deficiency and later as a caloric source. And so what we had available in the 1970s was 100% soybean oil. Again, it was a great addition to parental nutrition because we could use less dextrose, hopefully reducing the amount of hyperglycemia one might see. But in recent years, starting around 2015, 2016, we saw the introduction of more mixed oil lipid emulsion. So we started seeing a four oil and then a two oil lipid emulsion introduced into the United States. And so with that, we saw the introduction of things like less phytosterol, which is a plant sterol, which is known to be a patotoxic. So these mixed oil lipid emulsions have less of that. Even had a mixed oil lipid emulsion with fish oil. So it was very interesting to have another option available because it had been quite some time since we'd had anything new in the parental nutrition arena. Being one of the older clinicians, you know, I was excited to see some newer products come to the U.S. market. We had been seeing these used worldwide in a number of countries, but we had not had those options in the United States. So with that evolution in mind, what role do lipid emulsions have in modulating immune function and inflammation? So we go back and we look in what we originally used in the 70s, 100% soybean oil was an omega-6. If you look down those fatty acid pathways, we know that arachidonic acid is part of that pathway. Your parent here is going to be linoleic acid, but further down that pathway is arachidonic acid. We know arachidonic acid is inflammatory in nature. We look at the leukotrienes and thromboxanes associated with that pathway, they tend to be more inflammatory in nature. So there was always a concern, especially those patients that had inflammation, those critically ill patients, for instance, with giving 100% soybean oil. But we gave it because we also knew that glycemic control was really important in those patients as well. With the evolution of some of the newer ILEs, we've seen the introduction of omega-3s. We know omega-3, thick fish oil, DHA, EPA, those being less inflammatory or anti-inflammatory in nature. So it's given us another option, especially in those patients that are critically ill, that we can consider maybe using a different lipid emulsion uh, in those patients could be beneficial in terms of reducing the amount of inflammation that may occur with introduction or the administration of parental nutrition. Now, if we zero in on current ASPIT guidelines for just a few moments, they recommend mixed lipid emulsions over pure soybean oil emulsions for stable patients. And for critically ill patients, they also recommend mixed lipid emulsions, especially ones that contain fish oil. So what are your thoughts about those recommendations and how do they impact your approach to clinical practice? Sure. Well, as I said earlier, I was excited to have some other options. Now, I will say that there's a little bit of confusion when we look at the latest Aspen critical care guidelines. It mentions either 100% soybean oil or a mixed oil lipid emulsion. Those were done in 2020. I would say we've had some additional trials and meta-analysis that have since been published that do show some benefit with using a mixed oil lipid emulsion containing fish oil, for instance, in those patients who are critically ill. And if you look back at the consensus recommendations, which I was a part of that paper, we mentioned that potentially there could be some benefit from reducing the omega-6 load from 100% soybean oil and using more of a mixed oil lipid emulsion containing fish oil. And so I think that consensus recommendation and most recently a PN International Summit occurred. So it was clinicians not only in the U.S., but Europe as well. And again, the European clinicians have had these options for much longer and have seen benefit from using these. And we're starting to see more and more trials, larger trials that are showing benefit from using the mixed oil lipid emulsions 
over 100% soybean oil, especially those patients who are critically ill, are those that have some inflammation occurring in the process in their hospital stay or even their home stay as well. For those just tuning in, you're listening to GI Insights on ReachMD. I'm Dr. Charles Turk, and I'm speaking with Dr. Phil Ayers about the use of mixed lipid emulsions in parenteral nutrition. So, Dr. Ayers, if we switch gears a bit and focus on how we should use mixed lipid emulsions in clinical practice, what factors should we consider when evaluating and selecting appropriate patients? First of all, you look at your patient population. Now, is your patient population primarily critically ill? the surgical patients, those things like that, we need to take into consideration. The length of therapy, for instance, if we have patients who we know they're going to be on parental nutrition for a significant amount of time, we may want to look at more than mixed oil. What we do know is the older lipid emulsion, 100% soybean oil, has a high phytosterol content, as I mentioned earlier. Phytosterol is a plant sterol that's known to be hepatotoxic, so we have seen some issues in patients on long-term parental nutrition where it may increase the liver function test, the transaminases, the bilirubins can be elevated. So that may be a patient where you might want to consider using more of a mixed oil lipid emulsion with less phytosterol. There are other mixed oil lipid emulsions that contain fish oil. So for those patients where inflammation is occurring in a critically ill patient, for instance, they certainly could benefit as well. So I really have to look at your patient mix. So maybe in a short-term patient, you would be okay with using 100% soybean oil for a short period of time, less than two weeks, for instance. But once we get out a little bit longer, I think we need to be thinking in terms of that more of a mixed oil lipid emulsion or if that patient is within some inflammatory process, like a critically ill patient, for instance, or maybe in a Crohn's patient, then we might consider using more of a mixed oil with potentially fish oil. They may benefit from using that type of product over an older 100% soybean oil. And how do we effectively monitor the use of mixed lipid emulsions and make necessary adjustments based on patient response and lab markers? Primarily with lipid emulsions, we're always going to look at triglycerides, right? And so we definitely need to be sure we're monitoring those. And those patients who are critically ill, we know oftentimes will have a high triglyceride level maybe because of inhibition of lipoprotein lipase. I would start there. And then if the triglycerides are elevated, then I've had to reduce. doesn't matter what lipid emulsion I'm using, whether 100% or mixed. We're going to reduce the dose or maybe even remove that. Uh, we also have to look for other lipid-containing products, for instance, like propofol, which is used in the ICU and include very old patients. So for patients receiving propofol, we may want to hold on using a lipid emulsion, whether it's 100% or mixed oil. So those side things, I think, are factors as well. We want to look at overall infection process itself, so looking at the CBC and seeing there's some benefit there. We want to try to maximize the dose of the lipid emulsion. So that's what's nice about some of the newer products. We can give higher doses of lipid emulsions than our older lipid emulsions. So that's when we give those higher doses, that would allow us to use less dextrose, which might decrease the incidence of hyperglycemia. That's one of those things we're monitoring as well, you know, the glucose control in these patients, especially those in the ICU. We know when the glucose is greater than 200, we see generally inhibition of chemotaxis, of phagocytosis, so those patients that I may not do as well from an infectious standpoint. And lastly, Dr. Ayers, do you have any final thoughts or recommendations on how we can best incorporate mixed lipid emulsions into practice? Yeah, I think, again, you look at the acuity level of your patient, the patient mix that you have. Again, if you have a lot of patients that are critically ill that you're using parental nutrition in, they may benefit from some of these mixed oil lipid emulsions. If you have those patients maybe that are going to be long-term PM patients, those patients that have elevated liver function tests, they too might benefit from the mixed oil lipid emulsions more so than the older 100% soybean oil we probably still need to keep 100% soybean lipid emulsion on formulary because of drug toxicities, for instance. So there's really not a lot of data in terms of using the newer mixed oil lipid emulsions in those patient populations. So keep that in mind as well. But in general, if we're looking at getting out past two weeks, then we may want to look at using more of uh, the newer lipid emulsions that are available now in the U.S. is how I would approach that. Well, with those final thoughts in mind, I want to thank my guest, Dr. Phil Ayers, for joining me to discuss how we can integrate mixed lipid emulsions into clinical practice. Dr. Ayers, it was great having you on the program. Thank you, Dr. Turk. I appreciate it. This episode of GI Insights was an educational grant provided by Presenius Cabby. To access this and other episodes in our series, visit GI Insights on ReachMD.com, where you can be part of the knowledge. Thanks for listening.